So finding square roots is all well and good if you have perfect squares. However, there's a lot of numbers in between those perfect squares. If you look at just the perfect squares, you've got 1, 4, 9, 16. There's a lot of numbers in between there. So the question is, can I, can I not take the square roots of those? Well, you know very well that you, you can take the square roots of those. It's just you get a very, very long decimal. So what we're going to talk about now, now that you've, you've learned how to evaluate perfect squares and how to, where that fits within the order of operation, how it relates to exponents, what we're going to talk about now is how do we estimate those square roots that aren't perfect. Out in the real world, nothing's perfect. So how do we estimate those square roots? So I've got two problems here we're going to do, and then I have a bunch of practice uh, the ways that you can practice this. Um, the first one here is the square root of 55. Now to do this, what we're going to do, we're going to start by making a square root sandwich. Um, so you're going to find the two perfect squares that this is in between. I don't know the square root of 55, but I do know that around the square root of 55, I have the square root of 49, and I have the square root of 64. Now notice, those are the perfect, uh, the perfect squares. I have to also then, to step two, is put square root signs on everything, on every single one. Because if it's it's not just 55, 55 is in between 49 and 64. But we want to know the square root of those things. Notice I put these inequality signs here. What I'm saying is that the square root of 55 is bigger than the square root of 49, but it's less than the square root of 64. We're just using those symbols to let us know that this is going to be between the numbers 7 and 8. Notice where I got those numbers 7 and 8. I just took the square root of those numbers. So this is going to be 7 point something. To do this, to get a good estimate, I'm going to do a, a, one, a couple different, a little trick here. Notice how I'm doing 55 minus 49. That is 6. That's the distance from 49 to 55. From four, 64 to 49 is the whole distance between the perfect squares. So notice how I have uh, 7 and 6 fifteenths here. The 6, notice it's kind of like I'm traveling along the number line. And uh, when I travel along the number line, I go from 49 to 64. That's a, a, a distance of 15. But I only go six of those, and I stop at 55. So I have 7 and 6 15. And so what I can do with that then is just change this to a decimal by dividing the top by the bottom. This is 7.4. The exact answer is not 7.4. Uh, the exact answer is something different than that. But this is a good estimate. That's one way you can estimate, by subtracting the distance from the starting perfect square and between the, the total perfect squares. All right, next one, I have the negative square root of 90. So the negative sign is outside. So I have the negative square root of 100 and the negative square root of 81. A little bit different here, though, because remember, negative 81 is bigger than negative 90, so I have to, I have to kind of flip my inequality signs here. Uh, negative square root of 81 is negative 9. Uh, and so the negative square root of 90 is between negative 9 and negative 10. So this is going to be negative 9 point something. So just doing taking the perfect squares tells me what two whole numbers or what two integers this is in between. Now I've got to do my subtraction. The whole distance, if I go 100 to 81, there's a difference of 19 between those two perfect squares. But I only went 9 of those. I went from 81 to 90. So this is 9 and 9 nineteenths, negative 9 and 9 nineteenths. Divide those out, and I get a long decimal. Again, this is not perfect. I'm just going to round this off at the hundredths place. This is negative 9.47. Do you have a couple practice problems like this uh, that, that will use this whole process here, but along with the subtraction at the end, get an estimate, round to the hundredths place. Let's look at how this might look uh, in an actual word problem in a real-life setting here. Uh, here, let me just cover. You're just doing the first one here. Um, if I have a tablecloth with an area of 50 square inches, calculate the, air, the length of each side. Well, a couple things here. Uh, go ahead and underline that area of 50. To find area, remember that for rectangles, this is length times width. Remember also, highlight that word square. This is a square tablecloth, meaning the length equals the width. I'm going to go through this kind of fast here, so you can rewind if you need to. But the, the bottom line here is I don't know L and I don't know W. So I'm going to call them x. So really what I have here, when I do length times width, I have x times x. And x times x is x squared. And that equals the area of 50. Now, the opposite of squaring something, if I'm going to solve this equation for x, this is going to be the square root of 50, which I don't know. This is where that estimating comes in. 
So x equals the square root of 50. I've got to come over here. That's between 49 and 64. So I'm going to go ahead and put the square root of 50 between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. And then uh, take the square roots. Notice it's the same process. It's just now I'm applying it to word problems. So 50, square root of 50 is between 7 and 8. Notice it's only 1 away from 49, so this is going to be 1 and 1 15th. I get the 15 from doing 64 minus 49. Bring up a calculator. Let's do 1 divided by 15. So this is going to be 7.07 if I round that off. So that's what x, the length and width, is about 7.07. .07. Again, that's not exact, but it does get us a good estimate uh, for our answer. I'm going to put approximate here instead of equals. The wavy equal sign is, means approximate. Um, that'll, that just uh, highlights the fact that these aren't exact numbers here. Go ahead and try those problems below, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.